are excited and you're ready to go over the quiz because you know that you got them all right. Uh, at least you got some of them right. Um, but we're going to go over it just in case you didn't get them all right. All right, so did, did you all pick up your quiz on the way in? All right, well, well you already know well, you already know the answers then. All right, so let's look at the quiz. Let's look at the quiz. And then, well, before we look at the quiz, let's have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful again for another opportunity to look into your holy word. And we pray just now, O oh Father, that you would come and that you would teach us. Speak to our hearts. Expand our knowledge on your word. Draw us closer to you and closer to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right. Uh, we want to welcome you, and we're going to go ahead uh, because we have uh, a number of things to cover this evening. So let's go ahead and review the quiz. All right, all right. Uh, this is the quiz review from the last lesson, and there were five easy questions. I don't know if you can see them from back there. Uh, for those who cannot see them, I'm going to read them, and you can give me the answer. Question number one from our last meeting was, Belshazzar drank wine from the golden vessels taken from the house of God, which was in Jerusalem. Is that true or false? That was true. That was the reason that he invoked the wrath of God upon him because they had taken the, the, the gold and silver vessels from Jerusalem when they, when they um, captured uh, Jehoiakim and when they carried some of the Jews back to Babylon. Uh, one of the things they did was they took some of the things from the temple or some of the things from the house of God. And, and, and when Belshazzar had that drunken feast, uh, he sent for those golden vessels that were dedicated to God. And, and when they began to drink out of them, the hand began to write on the wall. And God was foretelling their destination. All right, their destiny. All right, question number two was, many means thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Is that false? What, what, what means thou art weighed in the balances? Tickle. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, question number three. Babylon is another word for confusion. True, anyone say false? The answer is true. Question number four. In prophecy, water represents people. True or false? All right, true. You know, we looked at Revelation 17 and verse 15. I believe 1715 and we, we looked at some of the symbols and we we know it's from the Word of God that when you're dealing with prophecy water and seas represent people and we said that that the beast that was riding upon the waters represented the Babylonian religious system of confusion that was leading the people with false teaching that had them drunk you all remember that all right, all right. Question number five was, the Medes and Persians took over the city of Babylon the night of their handwriting on the wall. True, false? That is indeed true. Okay, let's get ready to deal with our lesson for tonight. Let's deal with our lesson for tonight. Our lesson for tonight is entitled what? All right, all right. I'm not talking about the lesson for, <laughs> I'm not talking about the lesson for Thursday, the lesson for tonight. All right, I know, you, I know you picked up the lesson for Thursday, but we don't want you to get it confused. Now, let me just say this. Uh, we want to encourage you to, to make sure you are here on Thursday and, and, and all of the rest of the nights. 
because we're going to start getting into some more, we're going to get into some heavier stuff. And uh, we don't want you to miss key parts so that you get behind and not understand. So we want to encourage you to make sure you do your lesson uh, because I think in our next, next session, we're going to be dealing with Daniel chapter 7 where it talks about those four beasts coming up out of, this, out of the sea or whatever. And, 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 and you know, one of them, uh, you know, had this different head like a lion, one head a bear, one had um, leopard's head, and then there was this ugly, undescript beast. And then it had 10 horns on his head. So when we, when, when we, when we meet together at our next session, we're gonna deal with that in Daniel chapter seven. So we want to encourage you to make sure you do your lesson and make sure you are here uh, so that when we go over, you will have the understanding of the lesson. Now, now someone, someone made, and, and, and often, and I don't know what happened today, I don't know if the rain uh, scared people away or what happened, but, but someone made an offer that they were going to give $25 to the person that bought the most guests five or more. Uh, they said they're going to give $25 to that individual for bringing the most people. Now we may even just put some more with it, may even just increase it, but it has to be five or more individuals and they have to be at least 10 years old or older. They have to be how old? 10 or older. And it has to be a minimum of five to claim your prize right now of $25. It, it, it might even go up. Uh, so we want to just, just let, let you know that, just put that out there. Uh, so that um, you can go and get your friends, your, your neighbors, your cousin, or whoever you want to bring, and, and bring them out here, and you all can just, just claim that prize, and you all can leave here and celebrate. But you will have the knowledge and the cash. Amen goes right there. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about our lesson tonight. Let's get into our lesson tonight. Uh, it says in Daniel, and I'm on page two, in Daniel 6, there's an attempt to prohibit true worship. Now, as a matter of fact, as we have been looking at Daniel, we notice that this theme of worship keep coming up. It keeps coming up. In Daniel 1, uh, uh, they had to make a decision as to whether or not they were going to obey the king or they were going to be true to the principles of God. In Daniel 2, the king has this dream. Nebuchadnezzar has this dream. And then in Daniel 3, he builds this golden image and he commands the people to fall down and worship this image. So then again, they had to make a decision whether or not they were going to obey man or obey God because God says, thou shalt not bow thyself down and thou shalt not worship any idols. And because they took a stand, they ended up in the fiery furnace, but we know that they were not there alone because when the king looked into the fiery furnace, he said, I see four men and the fourth one looked like the son of God. And they did not receive any harm from the fire. But then over in, 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 in Daniel, in Daniel chapter five, as we read on last, uh, at our last meeting, again, worship came into play because Belshazzar took those holy vessels that had been dedicated to God and he drank from them and he defied them and he defied God. And because of his behavior, he invoked the wrath of God upon him and, 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 and that night his kingdom ended and the same thing that was predicted in the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2 with the image his head was of gold and breast of silver. The breast of silver came and took over the kingdom of Babylon. And we know that that kingdom was Medes and the Persian, like Medo Persian. So the, the issue of worship was constantly coming into play. And, 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 and when we get into Daniel chapter 7, 
we're going to see again that the issue of worship comes into play. And we say it, we say it, that, that we, we did not start the battle, but, but, but by association, we have been drawn into the battle. And it doesn't matter what side you're on, but, but, but because of association, we have been drawn into the battle. Now, I trust that, 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 that because you're in the battle, I, I trust that is because of your association with Jesus and not your association with the devil. Because if your association, if you're in the battle because of your association with the devil, you're on the wrong side. You're on the losing side and you're going to lose and you cannot win on the losing side and you cannot lose on the winning side. And I said if you find yourself on the losing side, you need to change sides. All right? So the issue of worship keeps coming back. It keeps coming into play. Let's go back to the lesson. Let's go back to the lesson. It says in Daniel 6, there's an attempt to prohibit true worship. In the fire furnace episode of Daniel 3, they could still have worship the true God, but in Daniel 6, there is a prohibition against worshiping the true God. Let's, let's, let's pick up the story here in Daniel 6, verses 1 through 3. The Bible tells us, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom. Can y'all see that? And hundred, and how many princes? And how many? 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, so of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto him, unto them, and the king should have no damage. Now look what verse 3 says. Then this Daniel was preferred above the president and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So according to the Bible, and, and, and here's the answer to it, probably your first three questions. According to the Bible, there were how many princes over the kingdom? 120. How many presidents? Three presidents in charge are over the 120 princes. And of the three presidents, Daniel was preferred among the three. In other words, Daniel was favored by the king, and the reason he was favored by the king was because of his integrity. Because he was a man of integrity, because he was a man who was honest and one who walked upright, the king preferred Daniel, and he had in his mind to put Daniel in charge of the whole realm. Uh, to put Daniel in charge of everything. So Daniel was going to be the right-hand man of the king. Now, now you know sometimes, and, and some of you have worked on different jobs and stuff, and, and you've gone in and you've done your job, and you've got promotions while other people were, were passed by promotions because you did your job and you got there on time, and, and you didn't make a whole lot of noise when they asked you to do other things, and, and, and you didn't complain about it, and you worked, and they knew that you were dependable. So they promoted you and they, they, they gave you raises and stuff while the others did not get raises. But you also know that if you've been in that situation, that that creates a jealousy among the other people. It creates a jealousy and envy. And they begin to say stuff like, who do he think he is? He think he's special. Uh, uh, you know, he's just a kiss up to the man and that kind of stuff. And the reality is that they looked at you and they saw you as a person of integrity, so they decided to promote you and to give you raise or to reward you because of your integrity. But, 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 but understand that just because you do good don't mean that everybody gonna like you. As a matter of fact, there are people who will hate you because you do good. There are people who hate you simply because you do right. And they are simply carrying out the behavior of their father, the devil. 
Because the reality is that as you do right, you are reflecting the character of Jesus and the devil does not like it so. He seeks to attack you and destroy you and you will discover that this is exactly what happened with Daniel. So according to the Bible, there were 120 princes over the kingdom uh, and, and there were three presidents over the 120 and Daniel was the preferred one. Now according to verse 4, the other presidents tried to find fault with him concerning his conduct in the kingdom. They were trying to find a reason to accuse him. Now he had not done anything to them. But, but, but because of his, his behavior, because he walked up right, he had some haters. And understand that when you walk up right, you're going to have some haters. Uh, somebody, just, somebody know what I'm talking about. So according to verse 4, the others tried to find fault with him. And, and, and this is what the Bible says. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error of fault found in him. So Daniel behaved himself in a way that was upright in the kingdom. He didn't get into anybody's business. He didn't create any mess. He wasn't a part of any gossip train. He was not a part of any, any, any little plot to overthrow the king and become the leader. He walked up right before God. He did that which was right in the sight of God and in the sight of man. And when they looked at him, they, they tried to find fault, but the Bible says they could not find any. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing for people to say about you? That even when people try to find fault in you, they can't find any fault? That even when people lie on you, their lie will fall down to the ground because your life will contradict the lie that they're telling and the lie will not take legs? And this is what was happening with Daniel. He was found faithful. And when they couldn't find, when they couldn't find fault in Daniel's character or behavior, they went after him in the area of his relationship with God. And that's what question four says. Question four says, could the scheming princes find any fault with Daniel? The answer is, no, they could not. But they were not content there. They were not satisfied there. They went after him as it relates to his God. Now notice what the Bible says in verse 5. It says, Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except, except what? except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. They said, we're not going to find any, anything to accuse him on unless we come up with something that pertains to his law, to the law of his God. A praying man. They knew that Daniel worshiped God. They knew that Daniel obeyed the law of God, so they came up with a scheme to get rid of him. They came up with a plot to get rid of Daniel. And they said, listen here, he's not going to cheat on his taxes. He's not going to steal any money out of the pots. He's not going to steal any money from the king. We got to find something that we can get him on. Hey, let's try him on his relationship with his God. So they decided to come up with a scheme to get him as it related to his God. Notice what the Bible says in Daniel 6, verses 6 through 9. It says, then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king 
and said thus unto the king, King Darius, live forever. I told you what I told you about that live forever mess. They always kissing up to the king. King Darius, live forever. Verse 7 says, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and princes, the counselors and captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lion. Now notice what they said in verse 6. It says, then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king. And they said in verse 7, all the presidents of the kingdom. Notice how they conveniently lie. Daniel was a president. Matter of fact, he was the head man. And they said, all the presidents have come together, and the princes will come together, and we decide, the counselors and, and, and all of us will come together, and, and we, we talked about this thing, and we decide that you need to establish a royal decree. A decree that no one should petition any god or man for 30 days. In other words, they said, you need to come up with a decree that nobody can talk to God, nobody can pray to God, nobody can ask God for anything for 30 days. And if someone violates this, this, this decree, they need to be thrown in the lion's den. But you, you, you are the ex exceptional king. Notice what the Bible says in verse 89. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which ours is not. Now, understand, understand what he's saying here because according to the laws of the Medes and Persians, when a king signed a decree or when this king signed something into law, it, it, it could not be changed. So even the king could not go back on his word and change what he signed into law so it was it was it was uh which altered not or it was unalterable it was unchangeable the king had to honor what he had what he had written and he was supposed to honor what he said as a matter of fact as you read in the new testament uh you would discover that this is the very reason that john the baptist got his head cut off because the, the little young lady, she came and she danced, she danced before the king and he said, listen here, ask me whatever you will and I'm gonna give it to you uh, according to the upper to the half of my kingdom. And she went and talked to her mother and her mother said, tell him to give you John the Baptist's head in a charger. And the king didn't want to do it, but because his word had gone forth, he couldn't go back on it. Notice what the Bible says in verse nine. It says, wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. So the king signed it under the guise or under the pretense that everybody was in agreement, that all of the president, including Daniel, was in favor of it. But what happened was they lied to the king because they wanted to get rid of Daniel. Now, there was a question in your lesson. Question number six said this. What request did the scheming princes make of King Darius? They made the request that whosoever asked a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save a deal, king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. So they tricked him into signing. But, but, but here is the thing that when you are committed to God and when you know who God is and when you have made up your mind that you are going to follow God, you don't care what the decree is of the laws of the land if it is conflicting with the laws of God. Did the signing of the decree affect Daniel's behavior? The answer is no. Daniel did not change his prayer habits before the decree was signed, Daniel was praying three times a day. After the decree was signed, Daniel kept praying three times a day. 
Daniel didn't close his window. Daniel didn't say, I'll just go inside and at the regular time or another time, I'll pray at a different time. So instead of praying at 12 o'clock, I'll go in and I'll pray at 2 o'clock and they won't even know it. And I'll just close the doors and I'll just shut the windows and I'll just go in my closet and I'll pray soft enough so nobody will hear me. No, Daniel didn't change a thing. He did exactly as he had done every day before the signing of the decree. He prayed, he continued to pray daily, and he continued to pray three times a day. So he did not change what he was doing. Now, I know a lot of people would have came up with some creative ways to continue praying. Uh, some would have no doubt said, well, I'll just pray in my mind because we can do that. I'll pray in my mind and no one will ever know that I'm praying. I'll just pray silently. Some maybe would have said, well, I'll just pray before I go to bed. Ain't nobody going to be around my house, and in my house uh, that time of night. So I'll just say a little quick prayer uh, before I get into bed at night. Or I'll just get up early in the morning and pray before everybody else gets up. Somebody would have came up with some creative ways to keep praying. But Daniel didn't change a thing. kept on praying to his God as he had done in the days before. Well, on, in, in your lesson on question number eight, there is a question asked. It says, when the princes saw Daniel praying, what did they report to King Darius? We know that they reported that Daniel prayed or Daniel continue to pray. As a matter of fact, this is what they said. Daniel 6 and verse 13, they said, it says, then answered they and said before the king. Now notice, notice the conversation they're having with the king. And these are the kind of words we use when we don't really like somebody. Notice what they said about Daniel. They said, they answered and they said before the king, that Daniel, that Daniel, they could have just said Daniel, but no, they, they want to emphasize that Daniel. You can tell by their, by their, by their word and that, that they didn't like Daniel, so they said that Daniel. And sometimes, you know, when, 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 when someone does something to offend us or if we don't like people, we, we might say that little witch. Hmm? Or that no good rascal or that whatever. I mean, some, sometimes people use some French, and that so-and-so. But, but, but you can tell from their language that they did not like Daniel. They said, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah. And what they're saying here is, 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 is that Daniel, that, that, that old Daniel that we don't like, who is of the children of the captivity, who came here as a slave. And, 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 and they were upset. You can, you can sense the jealousy because Daniel was preferred above them. So they said that Daniel, and they identify him with the slaves or the Jews that had been captured at Jerusalem because people don't think much of slaves. Hmm? You know, back in the day, they, they, they didn't consider them as human. They didn't consider them as a man or a woman. So he says, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, that slave that you all brought, that slave that came from Jerusalem, he's dissing you. He regardeth not thee. They're accusing Daniel of disrespecting the king. He regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but make his petition three times a day. In other words, king, he ain't paying you no attention. Your main man, Daniel, that you have set up, that one who came in as a slave, he don't even respect 
rebuke you. He's disrespecting you. He's disobeying the decree that you have put into law. And it went on to give the king or to remind the king that the law that he had signed could not be changed and that he had said that, that whosoever disobeys it will be thrown into the den of lying. So the princes, they did not hesitate a moment. As soon as they saw Daniel praying as he has always done, they reported him to the king. Now they thought in their mind that they would get even. They thought that finally we can get rid of this Daniel. We can get rid of this goody two-shoes. We can get rid of this holier-than-thou man, and we can get him out of the way, and then we can run things the way we need to run it. Uh, in Daniel 6, 14, the king realized that he had been tricked by the princes and presidents. And he was unable to change the law that, that landed Daniel in the lion's den so how did, because he couldn't change the law, how did the king spend the night? How did the king spend the night? Didn't sleep. He spent the night, the Bible says, fasting. How did the king spend the night while Daniel was in the lion's den? He spent the night fasting. He realized that he had been tricked. He realized that they had pulled the wool over his eyes. He realized that they had come and bamboozled him. And now they have got his main man thrown in the lion's den. And the king liked Daniel because he was a man of integrity. He was a man that walked up right. And now they get the king's main man, the one that the king was thinking about promoting over the whole realm. Now they get him thrown in the den and they get the king they, and they use the king to accomplish their purpose. Uh, but the king was very disappointed and displeased with himself. Uh, but but it tells me, it, it, this tells me that, that, that he, had, he had at least witnessed Daniel communicating with his God. He had at least noticed that Daniel had a relationship with his God and even though the king didn't have a relationship with his God, the king took it upon himself to spend the night fasting on behalf of Daniel. What did the king discover very early the next morning? He was up all night, he couldn't sleep, thinking about how the lions can possibly destroy Daniel, how they could possibly tear him from limb to limb and he will not have this man of integrity to lean on anymore. He thought about how he had, had, he been, how he had been tricked and how he had been fooled into doing so. And his heart was heavy for Daniel. Question 12 says, what did the king discover very early the next morning when he came to the lion's den? What did he discover? He discovered what? You gotta say it loud, the fan is blowing. What did he discover? I hear you saying something, but I didn't understand you back there. You're too close to the fan. <clears throat> he discovered that he was alive. Verse 19 says, then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste. He hurried up unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, notice how he describes Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest how? Continuously which means that Daniel was not a part-time Christian. He was not a part-time servant. He was not one who served God when things were going good and ran and abandoned him when things were going bad. He was not one who served God as long as God was blessing him. 
he served God whether the blessing was falling upon him or not. He did not serve God when, 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 thing, uh, when things were easy and, and, and left him when things got hard. Daniel served God continuously in good times and bad times. Daniel served him when he came out, when he was brought there from his homeland, brought there in slavery, when he was promoted to high position, and he was still serving God now. So he, he served God continually. It was, not a, it was not a once a week thing. I think I'll go to church. Go to church one time this week. Spend an hour at church, two hours, and leave and do whatever I want to say, well, I'm giving God his time now. It's time for me to have my time. No, he served God day in and day out. And this is what God is looking for. He's looking for a people who will serve him in good times, in bad times, in happy times, in sad times, day in and day out, in the light, in the darkness, serve him continuously. It says, oh Daniel, serve them the living God, is that God whom thou servest continually, able, to deliver thee from the lion. Is he able to deliver you? Verse 21, then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has what? Shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Daniel is saying God has sent his angels to shut the lion's mouth. God has caused the lions to become vegetarians. And they didn't want any of this meat. They looked at me all night long, but they did not attack me. They did not growl at me. They did not harm me. God sent the angel down here and shut them out. Earlier, that if we honor God, he will honor us. When we looked at the Hebrew boys in the fire furnace, I said that when we honor God, he will honor us. And just like he was with the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, just like he was with them uh, in, the, in, in the realm of Babylon, getting them promoted and so forth, he will be with us. If we honor God with our behavior and our lifestyle, he will honor us and take care of us. It says, my God is in the angel and has shut the lion's mouth. Now, question number 13 says, what command did the king give concerning the scheme in princes? You find the answer to that in Daniel 6 and 24. There is a saying that what goes around comes around. And those who do others wrong will be done wrong. Those who tried to get rid of Daniel ended up losing their own lives. What command did the king give concerning the scheme of princes? That they should be thrown into the den of lions. The Bible says this in verse 24, and I want you to notice this here. Verse 24 says, and the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, and who else? Their children, their wives, and the lions had a mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever, or you can say, or before they came at the bottom of the den. So as a result of the behavior of those wicked men scheming against Daniel, trying to get rid of Daniel because of their wicked behavior, God 
turned the tide. He reversed the tide. And this is why, this is why you don't have to worry about getting even with people. That you are a Christian. You, 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 you don't have to spend your nights staying up trying to figure out how you're going to get even with people and how you're going to miss, how you're going to do somebody because they did you wrong. How you're going to get even with them or how you're going to do them worse than they did you. You don't have to spend your time doing that. All you got to do is keep serving God. And God says, vengeance is mine and I will repay it. And when God takes care of business, it's taken care of. Nobody knows how to take care of business better than God. Nobody knows how to take care of people better than God. Nobody knows how to take care of haters better than God. Nobody knows how to take care of people who do you wrong better than God. They might think they're getting away, but if you belong to God, God is going to make sure that justice, He gonna make sure that justice is served. And a lot of times we get in trouble because we try to take things in our own hand. I'm gonna pull out my nine millimeter. I'm gonna get my Glock. And I'm gonna settle the score. I'm gonna put somebody in the ground. Let God take care of it. Nobody knows how to fight the battle like God. Oh, let me say that again. Nobody knows how to fight the battle like God. You, you might know a little karate. You might know a little taekwondo. You might know a little all that stuff. But, 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 but when it comes down to true warfare, nobody is better than God. Not the special forces, not the Navy SEAL, not the Marines. Not, nobody's better than God. God is in the league all by himself. And when God takes care of somebody, he takes care of them. God said, I'll contend with those that contend with you. In other words, those that fight with you, I'm going to fight with them. <laughs> I told you, it's, it's, it's by association. Because you align yourself with God, those who are your enemy and those who are enemies of God, they are enemies of yours. But those who fight against you are indirectly fighting against God because they are fighting against his child. And you know how it is as a parent. If somebody messes with your child, somebody got to pay a price. And so it is with us because we belong to God, those who have accepted him as Lord and Savior. So it is with us, those that mess with us. <laughs> they got to fight, they got to deal with God. Which means, which means that I don't have to be afraid of anybody. And I don't spend all my night worrying about what somebody's trying to do. I don't care who's talking about me, what they're saying about me, because I know in the fullness of time, God is going to set the record straight. Now, I'm not worried about what they say and how they try to mess up my reputation or scandalize my name, because I know that God is able to keep my reputation and God is able to deal with those who are trying to harm his children. And he'll deal with them. Sometimes people think they're slick and they do stuff. And they, they, they think you don't even know about it. Try to undermine you on the job. Lie to the supervisor about you on the job. Doing all these things to you underhand, smiling in your face. And you saying to yourself, you need to get your little smiling face, lying self out of my face. But you don't tell them. You don't tell them. It's in your mind. You understand. You already know they come to you as if you don't know what's going on. But, but what they don't know is the person that they told has come back and told you. And you just keep on treating them like you don't know anything. And they just keep on talking to you like you stupid, like you got a big stupid sign on your head. And you just keep on going by your business because you understand that God is going to take care of that situation. And Daniel, and Daniel, he understood. He understood that God was going to take care of the situation. So he didn't stop praying. He kept on praying. Kept doing the things that he was doing. And the Bible tells us that the king, the same king that they had tricked into getting Daniel thrown in the lion's den is the same king that gave a decree to throw them in the lion's den. But it didn't just, didn't just throw them in, just, that's just threw the children in. 
Let, let, let me say some parents. Because there are times, there are times when, when people feel that what they do doesn't affect anyone but themselves. What you do can have an impact on your children, on your family. Yeah, quiet here, quiet here. Amen goes right there. What the man does as the head of the household can have an impact, negative or positive, on the entire family. What the woman does in the household can have a negative or positive impact on the entire family. What these men did in trying to get rid of Daniel had a negative impact on their entire family. Their children were fed to the lion. Their wives were fed to the lion. So it came back to them. And it came back multiplied. Now, If you read verses 25 through 28, you will see uh, that the king, the king gave, he gave honor to the true God. Uh, he said that Daniel's God was the living God. Says that his kingdom shall not be destroyed. Notice what the king is saying here. The king is echoing what Daniel shared with Nebuchadnezzar almost 70 years ago. That the kingdom, which was represented by the stone in Daniel 2, if you remember, that his kingdom will have no end. It will not be destroyed. When God set up his kingdom, it will not be destroyed. It will not have end. Now here, almost 70 years later, we have another king echoing the same sentiments that were found in Daniel 2, which was said some 70 years past. Says he delivers and rescues and work his signs and wonders in the heavens and the earth. He delivers and rescues. He delivered Daniel from the lion den. He rescued him from the danger of the lion. That's good news. Because the same God that delivered and rescued Daniel is the same God that can deliver and rescue you and I. It doesn't matter what situation we find ourselves in, our God is able to deliver and rescue us. Now, now, while time is getting away, let me, let me hurry up, let me hurry up with this. How did Daniel develop such a deep personal relationship with God? You see, why was Daniel able to come out of the lion's den without any harm? It was because of his relationship with God. And question 16 says, how did Daniel develop such a deep personal relationship with God? <clears throat> well, he prayed three times a day. So he, 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 he talked to God. Not only did he pray, but he studied the Word of God. He had a constant relationship with God because he constantly communed with God. Uh, under question 16 in the note it says, each day he spent time in special communion with God. The only way in which we can develop a personal relationship with God is to spend time with Him. Because Daniel spent this quality time with God, he could make it through the lion's den. Skip on down, last paragraph uh, under that section. It says, no earthly relationship can 
be thoroughly established unless people take time together. Unless they do what? Take time together. A husband and a wife will grow apart if they don't set aside time to develop their relationship. Likewise, a Christian who does not spend time with his God will not be prepared for the final scenes of earth history. The secret of Daniel's success is his prayer life, his relationship with God. If you want to see God do great things in your life and on your behalf, develop a relationship with him. Spend some time talking to him in prayer every day. Spend some time studying his word every day. Spend some time meditating every day. Spend some time with God and you will see God work miracle after miracle in your life and your relationship will become stronger and stronger every day so that when the devil comes and punches you, you just don't punch him back. Not gonna run in the corner and start crying and say, I don't know why the devil is on my back. I don't know why the devil is riding me. No, you're not gonna run somewhere and hide when he punches you, you're gonna punch him back. Not gonna go over there and cry and have a little pity party because you're gonna have strength and because you're gonna have somebody on the inside of you and the Bible says, greater is he that is in us. I'm talking about you have Jesus in your life. Huh? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And if you have Jesus on the inside of you, then the devil will not be a match for you. All right, all right, time is, time is gone. I think it's time, I think it's time. We'll just stop it right there. We'll just stop it right there. It's time, it's time to do the quiz. I know you're ready, I know you're ready for this easy quiz. So, so go ahead and take out your quiz card. Go ahead and make sure your name is on your quiz card. Need a quiz card? Raise your hand. All right. Raise your hand high if you need a quiz card. All right. We see one up here that need a quiz card. Oh, we need a couple of quiz cards. All right. Want to make sure you put your name on the quiz card. Again, we want to remind you that we have a prayer box. If you have a special prayer request, have a special prayer request, just um, write it down and put it in the prayer box. And there are a team of uh, prayer warriors who will pray on your behalf and lift you up before God. Also, if you have questions concerning the lesson, then you may put them in the, in the question box and at the beginning of the next meeting, we will take some time to answer it uh, from the Word of God. All right, are we ready for the quiz? Are we ready? We're ready for this easy quiz? All right, question number one. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me in the back, back there? All right. Don't want, you to, don't want you to miss it because you couldn't hear me. Question number one. There were 120 presidents ruling in the kingdom of Medo-Persia. There were, is this true or false? There were 120 presidents ruling in the kingdom of Medo-Persia. True or false? Let me give you the answer. Everybody know that's true or false. One more time, question number one. 
there were 120 presidents ruling in the kingdom of Medo-Persia. That's true or false? Question number two. This is not true or false here. You're going to have to answer this one. What did God do to the lion's mouth when Daniel was thrown into the den? Question number two. What did God do to the lion's mouth when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den? That's not true or false. You got to write an answer. All right, question number three. This is a closed Bible, closed mouth, closed quiz, uh, cl <laughs> closed lesson quiz. Do not listen to the person next to you or at your table. I told you before, they might just give you the wrong answer. All right, question number three. Belshazzar spent the night fasting when Daniel was in the lion's den. Or I can put it another way. King Belshazzar spent the night fasting when Daniel was in the lion's den. True or false? One more time because somebody looking at me like you didn't hear me. King Belshazzar spent the night fasting when Daniel was in the lion's den. True or false? Question number four. Question number four. <clears throat> this is true or false. Relationship with God, he was kept from harm in the lion's den. Question number four, because of Daniel's relationship with God, he was kept from harm in the lion's den. Question number five, the last of the easy questions. <clears throat> Question number five. <clears throat> in the end, those who sought to harm Daniel were thrown into the fiery furnace. Question number five. In the end, those who sought to harm Daniel were thrown into the fiery furnace. True or false? <laughs> Question number three for those who missed it. Question number... Question number three, for those who missed it, can you all hear me back there? Can you hear me? Okay, question number three. Bel King Belshazzar spent the night fasting when Daniel was in the lion's den. All right, all right. How many got them all right? Let me see your hand. One, two, three. <laughs> Y'all not too sure? You're not too sure? All right, how many know you got at least four right? Let me see your hand. All right, at least three right. All, all right, now you know we're not, going be, uh, we're not going below three. All right, all right, because if you go below three, you are less than half, and if you got less than half, well, you know you need to uh, review the lesson again. All right, okay. <clears throat> All right, well, um, make sure, make sure your name is on your quiz, uh, your quiz card. Now we're gonna get ready to take up the offering. We're asking if you have an offering you want to give, just place it inside your quiz envelope.